Hello and welcome back to Remember the Flowers. We'll be continuing where we left off in Chapter 14, I believe. <laughs> um, so in the previous part, I believe it was the um, interlude. So we got to see how Cooper is doing, I believe, with, um, you know, and resume and all that stuff. And, well, hopefully he settles in, but uh, stuff is happening, I suppose. <laughs> Um, he's been put in the care of someone who a lot of you have been speculating as to who they are, thinking that it's perhaps, uh, Deanna or someone else, but, you know, we'll have to see eventually, I guess. And, um, I believe our little Cyrus has decided that they want to be an active participant in the resistance. And they want to speak with uh, Titania, or Titania, whatever, however you say the name. And, um, yeah, that's basically it, kind of. So, um, I guess without further ado, let us begin Chapter 14. Chapter 14, Exercise Caution. Before I know it, another month passes in the blink of an eye. I still wonder if my perception of time is different from others. Once we got back, I started going to the gym for a lot more than just rehabilitation. Karain has been teaching me more than just self-defense, though even I can tell that there's no real technique involved. She's not a martial artist, but she knows how to do damage. That's all I really need. Karain yells at me from across the gym. All right, Sai, any more and you'll knock it off the hook. Come on, time for a break. Okay. I take a deep breath to stabilize myself before I make my way to Karain and Kanto. Oh, hey. When did you get here? About ten minutes ago. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you had a vendetta against punching bags. Was I swinging too hard? No such thing. Though in all seriousness, you'll tucker yourself out if you use all your energy like that. Karain lowers herself into a boxing stance. I know Talon is teaching you how to use a knife, so I want you to try to practice quick, but precise strikes. She starts punching the air in multiple different areas. I'm not a knife kind of gal, but they can do some serious damage with minimal effort. I nod along to her demonstration. Kanto hands me a canister of water, staring at me. What? What happened to your scars? Oh, Vita helped me cover most of them up. If I'm going to go out in public more often, I want to look less conspicuous. As if anyone's going to miss that snow white hair of yours. You kept your scars on your chest? Oh, uh, yeah. I place my right hand over them. These are the only ones that I have some sentimental value for. Thank you, Dr. Chow. Hmm, that's not all that bothers me. It looks like you're making some scary good progress. You were a twig when we first met. Now you look like you could handle an arm wrestle or two. I don't know a ton of humans, but I wasn't expecting your gains to be so... Fast. He says with some skepticism, which makes me panic a little. Oh, uh... Vita's been helping me with energy drinks and supplements. I swipe out my Axiom inventory screen and then pull out a thin but long case made of plastic. It's filled with medicine shaped like gumballs that are brown and smooth. I wanted an easier way to take my serum on the go, so Vita came up with these for me to store. I think back to when I was theory crafting these with Vita. When I got back from our trip, I went straight to Vita for advice on what I should do when out on the field. They were hesitant, but they figured out how to make compact balls of medicine for me. The main idea was to make it edible rather than something I drink. From what I understand, the Axiom doesn't play well with loose liquids. That's why you'll see that water the hyena concocted everywhere around here. Vita hands me the fruits of their labor, their first attempt at a medicine ball. 
you shouldn't need to visit me that much any more, if at all with these. I can have them shipped to your room on a weekly basis. That's amazing. Thank you. Will they be able to help me with my energy issues? To a point, yes. I suppose I can give you a quick burst of energy in a pinch, but I wouldn't rely on it. Vita pauses while they stare at me while writing something down in their notebook. They look annoyed. What's wrong? Do they taste bad or something? No. I made sure to make them with synthetic cacao powder, like you asked. Then what's wrong? After your most recent physical, it was apparent just how much progress you made. It's not normal. Your physique has improved much faster than I thought it would. Is it a bad thing? Well, hmm. How should I put this? It's not like you meant your words. This must be a first. Then I won't. Cyrus, your body isn't suited for long-term combat. I don't know. I think I could handle my own in a fight. You absolutely can, especially with that bizarre ability you told me about. But don't forget, you're over 300 years old. Your body might be getting back on its own natural course of life. You're willingly heading into danger, not to mention that you're taking supplements that haven't been fully tested yet. Just taking in your physical conditions, if you continue down this path, You probably only have another 30 years to live, if you're lucky. I decide not to tell them that part. I think 350 is a good age to die at. However, I made it a point not to tell my friends about that fact. I don't want them to fret over me any more than they already do. I hope they understand. Eventually, I take out a medicine ball before popping it into my mouth. Vita really made these taste like candy, to the point that I have to stop myself from eating more than I should. I can fix my lack of energy on the fly with these, though I still have to be careful. Wow! Wait, Vita made them? I want to try! Sorry, no can do. Ask them about getting your own. But they made these specifically for me. I don't want you to get sick. Please? No. Worth a shot. Still, it's strange seeing you this pumped up. Do you really want to join us? I do, yes. In that case, maybe we can spar some time. Don't insult him, Marine. He's not as weak as he looks. How's that insulting? He only fights people he knows he can win against. Scaredy cat. It's not like that. He grumbles. You look a little out of my weight class, to be fair. You have good muscles. That gives Kanto an excuse to flex his guns. Glad you noticed. One of the perks of being a dragon is that it's easy to maintain muscles. Yet you're too scared to get in an actual fight. I have my reasons. I know, I know. Just teasing. Hmm. <laughs> I could go easy on you, if you'd like. Gee, thanks. Wait, so she's serious? You don't like to fight her or something? Absolutely not. But you're so... I inspect him from top to bottom. Other than Karain, he's probably the beefiest member of the team. Well endowed? Karain snickers. His boobs are big, but not as big as mine. She flexes her arms and chest, causing me to laugh. God, you're both so annoying. Then what's the problem? Hmm. It's nothing to be ashamed of, man. Seriously. Well, it's just that being a hybrid makes it scary to get hurt. If I got into an accident, I'd be screwed. Even Tensia hasn't made a lot of progress in treating hybrids in serious cases. My blood, specifically, is a mess to work with. I see. That's a valid concern, to be fair. That gets me thinking. 
could you use my blood? What? Well, I am a pristine carrier. Could my blood help you? That's... I don't know. That's something to look into, though. Are you sure? Despite the morbidity of the topic, I'm glad that seems to put his mind at ease a little. I don't see why not. Just don't drain me dry or anything. Maybe I can get you a few bags of my blood for Christmas? What's Christmas? Oh, I'll, uh, tell you later. I talked to Kai mentally. Uh, what time is it? A quarter past two. Oh shit. Uh, sorry to cut this short, but I'm supposed to meet Talon at the shooting range. That's what I came to pick you up for, actually. He said he was running late, too. I get my shirt back on. Hope Silver doesn't mind me being sweaty. Are you gonna come shoot with us? Yep. I'm a little rusty myself. Talon said he'd help me to learn the snipe. Perfect gun for a scaredy cat. I'd like to see you handle something like it. Way ahead of you. She uses that as another excuse to flex her good bicep at us, eliciting an eye roll from Kanto. Can we go now? Sure, scaredy cat. Don't you start with that too. The sounds of resistance soldiers firing resonates throughout the room. This firing range reminds me of a bowling alley in a weird way. There are even tables set up for people to talk casually at. Silver reserves two lanes for us. I've held a gun a few times since I escaped, but it's still a weird feeling. Silver picks up on that right away. Remember, you can show whether or not someone gets hurt with a gun. I've seen your knife work, just think of it as a long-range knife. That's a strange comparison. But I guess I can see where you're coming from? It's just kind of weird. Oxymoronic in a way. What do you mean? I became a doctor to try to save people. Now I'm being trained to kill. Isn't that kind of ironic? You're still saving people, Cyrus. Don't forget that. I guess you're right. But still. According to Silver, the more you kill, the less you feel about it. He's right. I haven't felt that kind of guilt in a long time. I'm not particularly proud of that fact, but we have a job to do. And if you want to be a part of that job, you have to be comfortable pulling the trigger. Silver holds up a pistol at the barrel for me. He's right. No more hesitation. There's too much on the line. After mustering up the confidence to do so, I take the gun and then stare down the lane. Each lane is separated by its own wall, along with the shelf acting as a barrier from walking down the lane. There is a target board shaped like a person 50 feet away. Does this have the laser sight like I asked? Thanks to yours truly, yes. To get you started, we got you a more primitive model. Do you recognize it? Uh, it's a gun. That's all I can tell. Get acquainted with it. It's yours. There's a button near the trigger for the laser, so you can turn it on and off at your leisure. Okay. I steal myself and get into a firing position. Not bad. You sure you're still a newbie? I've had some coaching. Let's just leave it at that. I turn the laser on. From this far away, the slightest movement changes the trajectory quite a bit. Wait. Before you fire, put your earplugs and safety goggles on. Oh, right. I gently put the gun down on the shelf to put my protective equipment on. You should be thankful. As a human, you can wear some pretty effective earplugs. What do you use? Depending on the species, nothing. Sometimes we just stuff cotton balls in our ears and pull them out when we're done. Some people use energy-based guns for that reason. They're not nearly as allowed. The downside is that they're usually a lot bigger than a traditional gun. Silver puts on a pair of goggles and lays his ears back before he picks up a decent-sized rifle. Quick bursts are fine, but firing too much and too often could damage your ears. Accommodate for the fact that your eyes aren't the same level as your gun. Take a deep breath. 
Silver pauses before firing exactly one shot down the line. It hits the center of the target's head. Take your target out. That's all there is to it. Uh-huh. Speaking of, I'm going to head toward the sniping range. Meet you back home after practice, babe? I'll have to take a rain check, sorry. <sighs> With a scoff, Kanto makes his way out of the firing range. I can't help but stare at Silver in confusion. He catches me and snaps at me. Don't ask. Wasn't planning on it. I say with exasperation. The last thing that I want to do is agitate an armed assassin. Well, I'm going to start practicing. Mm. Let me know if you need help. He's not looking at me, but at the exit Kanto walked through. I take that as my cue to leave him alone. Instead, I focus on the reason that I came here, pulling a trigger without fear. I stick my earplugs in and my goggles on. Through my prior training, I have at least an inkling of an idea. Not only that, but I have a skill most people can't do. Slowing my heart rate down, I enter my time dilation. After enough practice, I can go in and out of it relatively easily, and with little setbacks. The only problem is how long that I can actually keep it up for. My artificial heart warms up over the duration, so I have to be careful to not to cook myself from the inside out. Even so, it's proven more than useful. I slowly adjust my hands so that I can aim the laser at the target's head. Firing my first shot is quite disorientating. Upon squeezing the trigger, my hand jerks up. I can just barely make the bullet out before it hits perfectly. That was the only one shot, and now I have to deal with the recoil. In real time, it only lasts a second. For me, it's ten times as long. I spend the rest of my time at the firing range focusing on getting used to firing and recovering from the recoil. Reloading in this state takes a lot of effort. Getting used to what was once instantaneous hand-eye coordination is tricky. This is good practice. I'm not sure how much time has really passed, but I eventually get to the point where a single target is not very useful. It's getting kind of repetitive. My chest starts to feel particularly warm, so I take that as a sign to take a break. Coming back to normal time takes only a couple of moments, and comes with a sensation of all the blood draining from my head. It no longer feels like I'm swimming through air. Phew. I hear Silver snicker next to me. It looks like he was watching me the whole time. I take my earplugs out to greet him. What? You always look funny when you're focused like that. Hey, I'd like to see you try it. I wish. It gives good results. He looks down the lane. I landed all my shots on the head, and even landed a few where the heart would be. You still have room to improve on your firing rate, but that accuracy is no joke. Hopefully I can make practical use of it during a fight. I'd offer to spar with you later, but I have a job that I need to prep for. Oh? Is that why you turned down Ring's offer? Yeah. Well, mostly. Seriously, Silver, what's going on? I don't want to get into it. You're going to have to eventually. It's heartbreaking to watch from the outside. I got another assassination mission to go on, and I don't want Ring to worry about me. He keeps bringing up that I shouldn't put myself in needless danger but he doesn't understand what I have to do. It feels like every time that we're alone together, we get into a fight about it. I don't have it in me to sit through another one right now. With Kanto's fear of pain, I can see where he's coming from. He doesn't want Silver to get hurt either. You love him, right? Silver doesn't respond. I don't think avoiding it will do either of you any good. I know, I know. I just... 
don't know how to get it through his head that this is something that I have to do. Is it? Yes. And I don't need you, him, or anyone else telling me otherwise. His fur starts to rise as expected. I respect him for sticking to his guns, but I can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. Which just makes it all the more painful to watch. I see. Then there's nothing that I can really say to help then. I'm sorry. I appreciate the effort. Believe me, I'm not mad at you or him. I just need people to leave me alone sometimes. That's all. I can make my own decisions too. I can't argue with that. Just know that your actions affect the people around you, okay? I have to get going. I probably won't be home tonight. You might not even see me until after my trip. Anything that I can do to help? Yeah, practice your form. An assassin should look intimidating when they kill someone. You look like you have noodles for limbs, sometimes. I'll try to work on that then. Appreciate the advice. Come back alive. I'll make sure that you're my first confirmed kill. I'll look forward to that. I'll see you later. Hmm. With that, Silver makes his way out of the facility. I look down at the gun in my hand, giving an assassin relationship advice a mile underground. I still can't believe where I've ended up in life. I put all my personal belongings and my axiom and then head out as well. I have a late afternoon lunch date with a certain tiger. It's the middle of the week, so the bar isn't very busy yet. I have Aaron all to myself, for the most part, while I sit at the bar. He still has about three hours left on his shift, so I offer to keep him company before he gets off. This has been a regular occurrence since we got back from our trip. Lately, he'll have a glass of fruit milk ready for me, complemented by a tiny paper umbrella. We've gotten quite comfortable with each other, at least I'd like to think so. Whenever I realize Silver is incoming home at night, I text Aaron if I can sleep over at his place. Sleeping near someone puts my mind at ease, I found out. Aaron's meticulously cleaning some dirty glasses while I sip on my drink. Hey Axel, can I ask you something? Oh, sure Cyrus, what's up? Feel free not to answer, but I've been wondering. Why do you keep your eyes closed all the time? Are they sensitive to the light or something? Oh! Aaron sets the glass he finished cleaning up on the shelf before turning to me with a cheapish expression on his face. It's kind of an embarrassing story to be honest. Do you really want to know? That only makes me more curious. Please? Okay, fine. He chuckles as he leans down on the bar in front of me. When I first joined the resistance, they had us stuck doing menial tasks. It was sort of a way to gauge how trustworthy we were. Though Xavier helped us climb the ranks a little bit, it didn't take long before we got more serious work. I remember it now. Xavier said that there was an orphanage that got caught in a resume power struggle. It wasn't anywhere notable, so it barely made headlines. We were sent to go help the facility and kids. It didn't seem like work I was suited for, but coming from an orphanage myself, I felt like I had an obligation to help out. Xavier was much more useful than I was. He helped entertain the kids while Rose and I moved the rubble. Lance struggled with it at first. He wasn't used to doing organized work like that. He liked doing things his own way. At some point, Xavier called me over to beat the kids, which turned out to be a mistake. For better or for worse, I'm pretty tall, so when I loomed over the kids, they started crying. One of them even said that I had scary eyes. In order to try to calm them down, I closed my eyes, then sat down on the ground so that I'd be closer to their height. Xavier giggled at the whole ordeal, which made me a tad embarrassed. After they saw that I was no threat, they started to play on my back like I was a jungle gym. 
I kind of just froze. I didn't want to accidentally hurt them by moving, which only made Xavier laugh more. As awkward as it was, it made me feel happy that I could help these kids somehow. The staff eventually called the kids over for lunch at the makeshift camp that we helped set up. Okay, okay, you can relax. We're all off of you. I littered a sigh of relief. I've been through a lot, but that was one of the scariest situations that I've ever been in. Aw, don't say that. They were having fun with you. You say that, but I made them piss their pants at first. Are my eyes really that scary? What? No. Well, not to me anyway. I grumble to myself. The last thing that I want is to scare the very kids that I'm trying to protect. Xavier always reassured me that my eyes weren't that bad, but I just wanted to be careful. And ever since, I kept the habit of closing them. Aw, that's both adorable and kind of sad. I hope that it didn't hurt your feelings or anything. At first it did, but I got over it. Besides, after all that's said and done, it made me happy that I could just cheer up those kids. That's good at least. Still, there is one thing that bugs me. What's that? I think your eyes are beautiful. I wish I could see them more often. Aw, oh, Cyrus, you're going to make me blush. His ears lay back in embarrassment before leaning down to the point where we're eye level. He's so close that I can just barely feel the breath coming from his nose. He slowly opens his eyes and gives me a coy expression. Since you like them so much, I thought that I'd give you a closer look. What do you think? Are they still beautiful? I can feel myself go beat red as he teases me. I, I, and you were talking about me making you blush. Yes, they are very pretty. Happy now? He reaches his paw up to pat me on the head. Delighted. Thank you, Sai. Oh, shut up. Aaron chuckles at my flustered disposition. At this point, I'm sure that he's aware of my feelings for him. I'm really not subtle at all. He hasn't made a move, and neither have I. I've never been the type to initiate a relationship. Still, he's certainly not afraid to tease me. Handsome asshole. I like that about our relationship. Besides Silver, I'd say that he's the person that I'm closest to. Aaron's axiom beeps, catching both of our attention. He quickly reads the message and then gasps. What? Is it something bad? On the contrary. Uh, your request to meet with Titania has finally been approved. He says with a little reservation. Still smiles. She says that she wants to have a private conference call with you next week. I'll forward you the message. She wants you to try to pitch something to her. What do you mean? In short, she needs to make sure that you're worth bringing onto the team. She acknowledged your passion, but we do dangerous work. If you're not up to her expectations, I can't imagine that she'll hire you. A pitch. Hmm. It's been a while since I had a job interview in any capacity. How about later tonight you come over to my place and we can brainstorm together? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, th that sounds good. Smooth. The smoothest. After our little lunch date, I decide to head back to my room to relax. I surf the gate for a couple of hours before deciding it's a good time to head over to Aaron's. I don't think that I'll ever get over how impressive the Axiom is. I was able to pack everything that I need to spend the night in just a few minutes. It'll be cold at Lambin Peak, so I decide to wear my jacket. Due to all of my training, I am able to fill it out more. Good, I'm not the biggest fan of wearing baggy clothes while in public. After double-checking everything in my Axiom, I make my way out of my room. Upon turning the corner towards the capsule port, I'm surprised to see Silver. He's talking to someone. I swear I recognize him from somewhere. And he doesn't look too happy. 
Look, it's none of your business or anyone else's. Aw, oh, sweetie, don't be like that. You know you can tell me anything that's troubling you. Only so that you can potentially use it as blackmail. I know how you operate. We both know that I have more than enough dirt on you and everyone else. I don't need any more to blackmail you with. Thank you. She towers over him easily with those high heels that she's wearing, adding to his predicament. The woman is teasing Silver to the point where he starts to bare his fangs. I've never seen him so agitated before. To try to help him out, I attempt to step in. Oh, hey Talon, back so soon? Both their ears turn towards my direction. Silver groans. Oh, for fuck's sake. Hi. Oh, you must be Cyrus. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. The woman turns her attention towards me, letting me get a good look at her. With those heels, she's a couple of inches taller than me. Her pink business suit matches her pink fur, which I assume is dyed. Call me Crystal, hun. Pleasure. She tries to offer me a handshake with a warm smile on her face. When I glance at Silver, he just shakes his head. Not wanting to make the situation any more awkward than it already is, I shake her hand. Uh, yes, I'm Cyrus. It's nice to meet you too, ma'am. My, how formal. Respect goes a long way, you know. Little Snowball here could learn a thing or two from you. She gives an exasperated sigh. Hmm, after all this time, you'd think that he'd consider me his mother. I don't need a mother, Crystal. He emphasizes her name heavily. You'd be surprised just how important having parental figures is for someone growing up. Ash is such a sweetie. Wonder what happened. Silver puffs up. You really think that you have the audacity to say that? We went through hell because of you. Now, now, we both know that isn't true. Oh, really? Hey, Cyrus. Uh, yes? How would you feel about someone knowingly sending you and your kid brother to be experimented on? I... Talon, we've been over this time and time again. At the time, I felt that reporting and showing you to the world was the only thing that we could do. Your existence being known to the country was protection in and of itself. You let them take us. We almost died. If that's how you want to interpret it after all this time, then there's nothing that I can do. Oh. What? Silver whips his head back towards me, which makes me jump. Crystal chuckles. Oh, uh, sorry. I just realized where I've seen her before. I think back to the articles and videos that I've watched over the past couple of months. She was a prominent figure in anti-resume propaganda. I've watched a few of your news stories. Not many, but... I know, I know. Hard to forget someone as stunning as I am. Stop, you're too much. Silver grumbles as he stares bullets at her. But yes, thank you. I'm a reporter out in the real world. Down here, well... She's the leader of the intelligence unit. She knows everything there is to know about the resistance, including those who work for it. You're no fun. Hmm. Sorry. Growing up in Resume kind of does that to you. But you should know all about that, unless you're finally slipping up. We both know that isn't true. If you want, I can share your baby pictures with Cyrus. What the? How? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I still slipping up? I know everything to know about everyone, including your hospital records. I was born in a hospital. You sure were. If you give me a kiss on the cheek, I could show you Ash's baby pictures too. What do you say? Fair trade? Silver is shaking at this point with his fists balled up. He quickly looks back and forth between the two of us. Silver starts to pout as he motions for her to get closer. Wait, is he actually going to do it? Crystal chuckles as she leans down towards him. He pauses for a moment before puckering his lips and slowly moving closer to Crystal's cheek. Just as he's about to make contact, Crystal stands up straight and then pats Silver on the head. 
See, I knew you were a sweetie. Don't worry, I'm not going to embarrass you that much in front of your friend. But... Crystal opens up her bright pink axiom and quickly taps the screen. Soon after, one of Silver's axiom beeps. Now don't say that I never done anything for you, okay? Still puffed up and agitated, Silver puts his hood on and then stomps away. I've never seen him make so much noise on an exit before. Just need to push the right buttons. I think it's good for him to let out his frustrations out like that. Goodness knows how much he keeps it in. She turns her attention to me. I hope you can take care of him for me, Cyrus. As you can see, we don't see eye to eye. She sighs, which seems to be genuine. Honestly, I don't know what to do about that boy. I can't speak for him, but just from this conversation, I think he's pretty comfortable around you. You really think so? I've never seen him get angry like that. He's at least comfortable enough to drop his tough guy act. Huh, how heartwarming. If being the lightning rod is all I can do, I guess I'm satisfied with that. As for you, Cyrus, I hope you've been settling in well. It was no easy feat to get you out of there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you again for your help. She chuckles. It is a breath of fresh air talking with someone so polite. The fox smiles at me, looking me over as if she was inspecting me. I understand that you're meeting with Titania soon, right? Uh, yes, I am. I guess by knowing everything in the Resistance, she knows all about me, too. Wonderful. I'm sure that you'll do fine. If you need any advice for your meeting, feel free to send me a message. Crystal crosses her arms with a serious look on her face. I know Titania better than anyone. While she might be willing to pull some strings, please keep in mind that your safety is of a top priority. If you don't prove your capabilities to her, she won't let you join. That being said, you just need to show your talents and what you can bring to the table. You don't need to be built like a brick house to be useful, nor an experienced killer. We have other jobs that we could offer. Take the next few days to figure out what makes you, you, and how you can become a valuable asset to our cause. Crystal swipes on her axiom, sending me a message with her contact information. Again, if you need advice, I am only a message away. I see. Uh, thank you for your help. I'll think hard about it. Good boy. I'll see you later, ghost of Resume. Hmm. I nod and she takes that as her cue to walk away, heels clicking down the hall. I turn my axiom on to read the message that she sent. I nearly choke on my spit as I see a picture of Silver as a baby attached as well. That would have been kind of cute to have right here. <laughs> Instead of transporting directly to Aaron's apartment, I decide to shop around Lambin Peak. I had the idea of buying him a gift as a thank you for letting me stay the night. I don't have a lot of plumes on me but I should be able to afford something. It's the least that I can do. I should have said plums. Window shopping is a tad awkward around here. Everything is either really expensive or incredibly niche. I don't recognize a lot of the gizmos and gadgets that I walk past, and I don't want to spend 200 plumes on a pair of glass tongs. Think, what's something that Aaron would like? Oh, I know. I rush to the only grocery store on the mountain. Everything looks fancy as hell. It's a small shop. They just poured everything that you can buy up to the counter. Hello, sir. Haven't seen you around. Are you new to the peak? Oh no, a friend of mine lives up here. He's actually why I've come in. Do you happen to sell fish at all? Of course. What would you like? Uh, the best you got. I had to start running halfway to the condo. Even with the help from Vita, my back gets cold really easily. Kicking off the snow, I quickly make my way inside. Aaron answers the door almost immediately. There you are! I was worried you have gotten lost! Oh, hell, I guess I am 20 minutes late. Uh, sorry about that. 
I want to do some shopping on my way over. Oh? What did you buy? I confidently hold up a sizable package wrapped in paper. Just a little something to show how much I appreciate you. Huh? Wait. That smell. Is that... The biggest salmon the market had in stock. Excuse me? But that's... That must have been so expensive. Good thing that I'll be starting to work soon. Right? That's not even a guarantee, and... Aaron's stomach starts to rumble, which makes me laugh. What? I skipped lunch today. Okay, fine. Get in here. Okay, okay. Aaron pulls me inside and then shuts the door before huffing. You know you don't have to spend that kind of cash on me. Oh, does that mean that you don't want the fish? That's not what I said. Hmm. Hmm. Well, thank you, Cyrus. I appreciate the gesture. He starts to ruffle my hair playfully. But let's wait until after you land the job before you start spending that kind of money, all right? Hey, come on. I have a fantastic resume. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah? Hit me with it. Well, you see... Does a 300-year-old doctorate count? Probably not unless you renew it, no. How about living for 300 years? That's gotta be worth something for endurance. I used to have to pick you up because you got too tired to walk. Psst, that was months ago. I'm totally fine now. If you say so... Wanna arm wrestle? Cyrus, my hand is as big as your head. I'm pretty sure. Did I stutter? Aaron chuckles. Sigh. I'm not going to arm wrestle you. Please. Aaron sighs. Okay, fine. Little does he know that this is just an excuse for me to hold his hand. I'm so smart. No wonder I was a doctor. Aaron places a wrapped fish on the kitchen island before he has us sit on the ground by his coffee table. Even while we're both sitting down, he towers over me. He places his left elbow on the table, offering his left paw. Do you want me to go easy on you? He asks with sincerity. I puff out my chest and then grab his paw confidently. It's very warm, which distracts me for a moment. Trust me, I'll be fine. I win. You cheated. All's fair in love and war, Cyrus. He says with a smug look on his face. I'll have to keep that in mind for the future then. Silver's been teaching me how to be stealthy after all. Oh yeah? What else has he taught you? He's been teaching me how to handle a gun too. It's weird, but I'm getting the hang of it. Oh? Hmm. Maybe we can go shopping for some weapons? Your pitch to Titania could be combat related. That's a good idea. Do you know any good shops? Plenty. Uh, although... Aaron looks apprehensive. What's wrong? I'm still worried about you trying to join the fray. Don't get me wrong, I am very happy that you found that kind of passion. But... Aaron pauses. I just don't want another Xavier situation to happen, you know? I nod. I understand the risks better than anyone. That's why I'm training as much as I can. The conversation reminds me to take one of my medicine balls out of my axiom. Vita's helped me find a good schedule for the medication. Karain and Silver have been great tutors, too. Plus, I got you here with me. You're all done wonders for helping me build up my confidence. So trust me when I say that I'll be fine, all right? Oh, Cyrus. Aaron opens his eyes and smiles. All right, I trust you. Just let me know if you ever need help. I'll come running, okay? Only if you ask me for help too, deal? Deal. He offers me his hand to shake. I quickly oblige before trying to bring it down to the table. He doesn't budge. 
A plus for effort. Had to try. Aaron chuckles before setting up. He puts his paws under my armpits to help me stand up before standing up himself. For old times sake, now how about we start working on that fish? Absolutely. Do you need any help? You can help me set everything up. The recipe is a bit of a process with all the spices and greens that I want to put in it. Let's get started then. Ew, fish. Aaron pulls out all the spices that we're going to use for the fish. Besides salt and pepper, there's a few that we'll use in small quantities. He hands me a bottle that's labeled Spriggan. Okay, what's this one? Since so much has changed in the world around me, we've made it a game to see what spices I can recognize even though they have different names. Oh, that's time, 100%. Like a clock? Yeah, but it's spelled differently. We mainly put it on meat that we cook in the oven. Well, I am putting this in the oven. That counts, right? Absolutely. Alright, give me another. Mmm, this one. He hands me a glass bottle labeled Firegrass. It's filled with little red and brown flakes. One sniff is all I need. Oof, damn, that's definitely crushed red pepper flakes. We used to put that on pizza. We're going to use this for the fish? No, I just wanted to see if you could figure it out. Rude. He. <laughs> alright. One more, then we'll get to work. He hands me a final bottle that's simply labeled cilantro. What's wrong? I take a big whiff of it. Mmm, yep. That's... that's cilantro, alright. Aaron chuckles. So this one stayed the same, huh? Looks like it. We mainly use this for Mexican or Spanish dishes, but it's also common in Asian dishes as well. Adds a little bit of freshness, especially in something like pho. Pho? Huh? I've never heard of it. Do you remember any of the recipes it was used in? I'd love to try them sometime. Uh, I could probably help make pho ask for tacos. I think back to the pre-made name brand taco seasoning mom used to use on lazy dinner nights. Probably not, no. I could make the ground beef and tortillas, but I don't know the right spice combination. Then maybe we can make our own? How hard can it be? Between the two of us, not hard at all. Do not make crunchy tacos. Not unless they're tacos dorados. Besides, any excuse to eat something with cilantro is welcome. I'm glad that you liked it. Both Karain and Lance thought that it tasted like soap. God bless them. I guess that's something that I have in common with Karain and Cooper, because I also think that cilantro tastes like soap. It's fucking gross. I don't know why people put it in food. I'm Mexican, and I don't know why people put cilantro on food. Ugh. Ugh. He, after we're done eating, do you mind telling me more about the recipes from your time? I would be more than happy to tell you, Aaron, how to make real tacos. Sure but only if you're writing everything down yourself. It'll be good handwriting practice. Aaron beams with excitement as he takes out some stationery from his axiom. Deal, I'd love to learn that. Uh, what was it, cursive? That is something that you'll need to find another tutor for. I barely learned that myself. Aww. Uh, just be happy that I'm not going to test you on anything. I feel like I'm not a very good teacher. Only one way to find out. Let me get this in the oven and then we'll get started. You got it. Aaron smiles as he starts to prepare the fish. I head over to sit at the bar while he works. I lay my arms flat on the counter so that I can rest my head to watch him. It's calming. Before I knew it, Aaron started to clean up the dishes, even while I was still eating. Aaron scarfed his food down very fast in order to get straight to his impromptu tutoring session. He said that it was the best fish that he had ever eaten, which made me very happy. Though I have to wonder how much he actually tasted. Regardless, I'm more than willing to help him with something that he's passionate about. Aaron set up a table to work out, saying that the coffee table would be too small for us. It's a nice and sturdy table made of wood. It's circular and looks pretty heavy. 
In typical Aaron fashion, he picks it up with ease. Once he gets a couple of chairs, I pull out one to sit next to him. Show me what you can write to get us started. Try writing, Hello, my name is Aaron Cosmos. It's nice to meet you. That shouldn't be too hard. Uh, give me a sec. A second turns into a minute. A minute turns into two. I pucker my lips. This is going to be harder than I thought, isn't it? When he does finally finish, he slides the paper over to me. Well, what do you think? He asks proudly. So proud that I have to make sure to let him down gently. I can barely make out any of what he wrote. Aaron, your name has two A's. Why'd you only write one? I thought that if the first one was capitalized, you wouldn't have to. Who told you that? Uh, Kanto? He states sheepishly. Of course he did. Is it really that bad? Well, it's almost illegible. If I didn't tell you what to write, I probably wouldn't be able to make it out. Oh. Hey, don't worry. We can figure it out. Can I see how you're holding the pen again? Sure. Uh, just like this? He moves the pen to the paper. His form is fine enough, but I think I see the culprit. His paws are so big the pen looks like it belongs to a dwarf. There is no way that he'd be able to control it with precision. I think that we need to get you pens that fit your size. The tiniest movements can ruin your handwriting. I gesture for him to hand over the pen. Once he does, I write the same sentence he did lower on the page in half the time. Though I haven't written in a very long time, the muscle memory is still there. Whoa! It becomes second nature once you get the hang of it. When we go shopping tomorrow, maybe we can find something better for you to write with? Aaron nods enthusiastically. I'd love that. Good. I pass the pen back to Aaron. If you don't mind me asking, why are you so interested in learning to write? Ah, well... Aaron scratches the side of his cheek. It's kind of embarrassing, to be honest. Oh, enlighten me. I tease him briefly. If you want to, that is. Well... Xavier used to handwrite me love letters when we were together. Ah. Is that right? Yeah. I'd find them every now and then. He liked to hide them. Being from a time before Axioms, he still handwrote pretty much everything. Aaron has a dopey smile on his face as he reminisces. It makes me happy to see him happy. I see. Can you tell me more about him? Well, it'd take me all night. He says jokingly, but I decide to call his bluff. Good thing that we have all night. We can talk about it while I'm tutoring you. How's that sound? Uh, okay. Well... Aaron picks up his pen again. Instead of trying to write, I think he's scribbling. Xavier was born during the transition period after the Seven Stars landed. Growing up in a desolate land, he didn't have much. Resume was the only thing keeping people alive in this part of the country. He happened to live close enough to it. Aaron sighs. <sighs> Back in the day, Resume advertised themselves as a paradise after the apocalypse. A very exclusive paradise. Even so, people flocked from all over just for a chance to be let in. As you know, they didn't accept everyone. Xavier considered himself lucky that they accepted him. I thought, wow, my family can finally take it easy for once. They promised that they take care of anyone that they deemed worthy. Though I quickly learned what they meant. Because I was the only pristine carrier, I was the only one that they took in. I was told my family would be safe outside of Resume. I can't confirm if they were or not. I never saw them again. Xavier's face looks hopeful, but I'm sure that they were straight up abandoned. I think he knows that, and that makes me ball up my paws tightly. The treatments weren't so bad at first. Over time, they pushed me more and more. 
it got to the point that I had to be in an isolation capsule just to be of use. I wasn't supervised as much as some of the other carriers. That's when we started planning my escape. Xavier sighs. Grant really did want to get me out and anyone else that he could out of that place. I just wish that he got out too. He's still smiling, but I can see a tear well up and then fall down his cheek. Gently, I try to wipe it away with my paw. He grabbed it and then stroked my fur. I hope that he knows the sacrifice wasn't in vain. All of the information that we smuggled out definitely hurt them. And most of all, I got to meet you, Aaron. Aaron sighs sadly while smiling. Even through everything, he remained a positive force of nature. I know that I would have given up a long time ago. I never got a chance to reply to any of his letters in a meaningful way. Any time that I tried, they'd just be a scribbled mess. So, I'm still trying to practice. Maybe I can give him one someday. I see. You really believe that he's still out there, don't you? Aaron struggles to answer at first. I do. I really do. I know it. Then... I take a deep breath, pushing my feelings down. <sighs> Let's make sure that the next time that you see him, he gets the sappiest love letter ever written. You would do that for me? Absolutely. You're my best friend, Aaron. I want you to be happy. Cyrus, stop. You're going to make me cry. My training must be paying off if I can make someone like you cry, huh? <laughs> yes, you emotionally punched me in the stomach. Good, I intend to make sure that you have the prettiest handwriting out of everyone. Good luck. We're both going to need it. We've got all the time in the world. Let's get started. All right. Thank you, Cyrus. I really, really appreciate it. You're more than welcome, Aaron. Trust me. Though it hurts, I'm not going to fuck around with Aaron's feelings. He's still grieving after all. I'm still very much interested in Aaron, but if I can ease his pain, that would be enough for me. Right? To be continued. I mean, it was kind of obvious that they wouldn't stick together. Well, that they wouldn't be together. Hmm. But poor, poor Cyrus. Anywho. <laughs> uh, so, what did you guys think? It's interesting that we're about to see um, Titania or Titania, however you pronounce it. And I'm curious to see if she's going to take whatever Cyrus comes up with. Part of me is like, hmm, maybe they're going to, um, like, how would you put it? Maybe they're going to, no, maybe Cyrus is going to say like, hey, I know where, you know, I might possibly know where this person, you know, this guy who Aaron, you know, Xavier, you know, I might know where he is. Maybe I can help, you know get him back and that might be the pitch I don't see how that would be possible unless he's like well here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get myself captured again and then you guys are gonna track me over to where they're gonna take me ah isn't that a very great plan <laughs> uh anywho I guess we'll have to see what happens in the next uh chapter what is it chapter 15 <sighs> Anywho, so, you know, you know the drill. Write down in the comments, you know, what you think is going to happen, what you thought of this update, etc, etc. And, um, you know, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Remember the Flowers yourself, you can do so by going down into the description and clicking the, uh, I believe it's the Remember the Flowers Twitter page, which will link you down, well, which will link you directly to, um, 
the itch.io page because I can't link to itch here. And there will also be a link down for the Patreon in case you want to, you know, support the project and get early access to builds of Remember the Flowers before everyone else does, such as myself. Well, you know, I, I get early access before everyone else. He 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 he. So I know what happens before everyone does. And yeah, you know, it does mean a lot to the devs and everyone, you know, that you are supporting them, telling them like, hey, I really like your project here. Have some money. <laughs> I want to support you guys. And, you know, yeah, you know, sort of like, you know, when a person has a coffee such as me, cough, 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 you know, if you want to give them money and tell them like, hey, I like your videos, you know, here's some money. <laughs> But yeah, you know, you know, support Remember the Flowers. It's a really good project. And I should know because all of you people watch it, you know, that's probably one of the main reasons why you subscribe. So, you know, give them money too. While also giving me money. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, um, so yeah, you know, write down comments. And I guess that's it for now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.